Welcome learners in today's chemistry lesson coming to you right from the top notch education center which is the uh, this is where we have the paragon of originality the cyber school the teacher of the day is Martin Bunguswa and today in our lesson we discuss surplus detergents. In our previous lesson, we had discussed soapy detergents. We saw that a soapy detergent is simply a salt of a carboxylic acid that has more than 15 carbon atoms. And there is a reason why you should have more than 15 carbon atoms because if the carbon atoms are too few, then the soap is going to be too soluble in water. You put soap in the water, it, the whole of it dissolves. So there's a reason why we need to increase the length of the hydrocarbon chain for it to become a bit longer so that it can withstand. Now, surplus detergents are prepared from petroleum products. So you observe if they asked you advantages of uh, surplus over soapy, we know that surplus are made from petroleum products, but soapy are made from fats, animal fats, and also plant oils, which could otherwise have been used as food for human beings. The process of their manufacture involves three steps. One, the hydrocarbon, which is an alkene, is reacted with benzene at very high temperatures to form a compound which is called alkyl benzene. Remember in our syllabus, we may not have taught you much about benzene. You are hearing it maybe for the first time. It is a compound which has a ring. As you can see on the structure, on the, you can see on my screen, that is how the structure of benzene looks like. That structure is called a Kekule structure, benzene ring that we are going to encounter benzene again when you're going to discuss about formation of a certain type of a polymer. Then after that, the benzene, the alkyl benzene that has been formed is reacted with the sulfuric acid to form alkyl benzene sulfonate. <coughs> Look at the structure. And when you are teaching you on this one, we, we, we may not emphasize so much on you knowing about that benzene ring, ring structure, but we shall always give you the, 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 the formulas of that compound. So because the alkyl may be a very long chain, we prefer to write simply an R. So you see here in the structure, we have written R and that benzene ring, and the compound is called an alkyl benzene. Then the alkyl benzene sulfonate is then reacted with an alkali like sodium hydroxide. And when you add sodium hydroxide to this uh, alkyl benzene, you notice the sulfate was there. The sodium hydroxide supplies the, the hydrogen, the sodium, to that structure. And we end up with a compound whose formula ordinarily is written as r dash benzene structure SO3NA and therefore we can say surplus detergents are called sulfonated benzoate salts. So it is a salt of benzoic acid. Like we said benzoic acid is, is an example of an acid that is used as a food preservative. It is a salt, arcanoid salt, but of benzene but then we add sulfuric acid to introduce the sulfur, and the whole thing is called sulfonated benzoate salts. Now, surplus detergents, to make it appear to look um, more realistic, are normally used at home for washing of clothes. For example, Aerio, Omo, in powder form. I've never seen Omo as a bar soap. I have seen sunlight. As a bar soap, we have seen sunlight as powder. The powder of sunlight is an example of a surplus detergent. Aerio, new aerio, is a type of a surplus detergent. 
Perfix. All those that we use to wash clothes are called soapless detergents. And these soapless detergents are made friendly so that they do not have a lot of effects on our hands. Therefore, at this juncture, students, we need to know how do we now distinguish a soap and a soapless in a diagram form. So, a soap will be written as R C O O N A. And then a soapless, which shall be written as R, then I put the ring, which is called the benzene ring, I put an O, then O, S O 3, N A. Notice that both of the structures, the soap and the soapless, have two ends. This end from here up to here is called nonpolar. This R. Then this one from here up to there is called nonpolar. And then this head here is called the, the polar. So for the soap, polar, nonpolar is the R. Then the polar is C O O. N A, you can see it is positively charged. So there's the polar and the nonpolar group. That is what is found. That's now how we can draw for you the structure of a soap and a surplus. When you see a sulfur in that structure, that indeed is a surplus. When you don't see a sulfur in it, it is only C O O and N A. That one is a soap, and that is how it's normally brought in the exam. We may not require you to know the whole of the structure of the R, what R is. But just know that R is a very long chain. For the surplus, R up to the end of the ring, that part is called the nonpolar. Then the OS or 3 NA up to the end, that is what is called the, the polar end. So that is the difference between the two structures, the, the, the polarity. So, how do these substances then wash? Because we said the work of a detergent is to wash, to help remove grease from substances. So you look at this now the general structure of the soapy and the general structure of the surplus detergent. The mode of action of both of them is exactly the same. That both of them have a polar and an unipolar. When you take the soap or the surplus, you add to water, it lowers the surface tension. And as by lowering the surface tension, it penetrates through the water. Because remember, water has an elastic skin, which could not easily be penetrated. So now the head penetrates through the water. And then the tail penetrates through the, the grease, which is on the fabric. Then... You can see now there's a tug of war between the head and the tail. The next thing that we do is called agitation. We can do mechanical agitation or we can do physical agitation. We can use a machine which is called the, the washing machine or we can knead or we can use our hands. That process is called agitation. And when we do the agitation, the grease detaches from the surface. And when it touches from the surface, it remains suspended in the water in form of um, globules or called missiles. And these missiles are then washed away by clean water through a process which is called rinsing. And basically, that is how it happens. When you are explaining the way it works, we use fewer words. But the process of washing takes longer because it all depends on how much of the grease you are removing from the surface. It is not very easy. Look at something like a washing machine. Sometimes you wonder, how does it penetrate? How does it know that this is grease? How does it know that I have to remove this? The process itself is very mechanical and selective. They know that without that head, the water will not be penetrated. Without the tail, the grease will not be penetrated. But once it's done, the mechanical agitation, which is called, um, you can even stir, you can even stir. And the whole thing is to make sure that the, the grease is removed from the surface. 
and then rinsing removes it all. So that is what we need now to know about our detergents. At the end, we have now combined both soapy and soapless detergents and seen how they do their work of rinsing. That is the information you need at home. You can also make your own soap by simply buying sodium hydroxide, get a fat, like when you, some people when they are eating meat, they find when it's too fatty, they keep it as they throw away the fat. You can use that fat with some sodium hydroxide. If you don't have sodium hydroxide at home, you can even just use wood ash. Wood ash, you mix with the fat and then you boil. Then you add sodium chloride, which is also readily available, and you'll get a soap, although it's not of good quality, but it can remove some small dust from your body. Or you can even use it to wash your handkerchief. So when we meet again the next lesson, we are going to look at the properties of these detergents. What effect do they have on the environment? Remember to prescribe to our channel that the Top Notch TV, you will get more of the videos involving how the soap generally is being formed. It is something that you can make at home.